AJJ. I'm excited for this one. I haven't talked about these guys yet. Let's get into it. AJJ, folk punk cult heroes formed in Phoenix, Arizona. Sean Bonnet, lead vocalist, crazy stuff. Their lyrics tend to focus on themes of like uh, just being a shy guy, poverty, existentialism, just generally negative shit. <laughs> <laughs> They've got a handful of very good records under their belt. Knife Man, a people who can eat people. Uh, you know, on their earlier works especially, it was very clear that they were probably taking a little bit from uh, sort of like lo-fi indie acts like Neutral Milk Hotel. Typically, their albums are very um, broad and sort of focus on a variety of different issues. But on this one in particular, there's a real uh, environmental angle being taken here and that is no clearer than on the title track of this thing disposable everything this is a brief examination on the futility of the modern world some real feelings of hopelessness coming through on the vocal performance here what i think is being said here essentially is that uh if i'm not mistaken if we continue to continue at the rate that we are continuing to do shit that we're doing we are not going to have anything to cherish in the future. Everything is disposable. It's a very somber, kind of stark ballad. Some nice string arrangements come in on the back end and color the very uh, dreary guitar chords. But to rewind for a second, the album actually starts with the song Strawberry Probably. It's a muscly acoustic rock performance, epic harmonized guitar soloing at the midpoint of this thing. We get this mantra repetition of everything, everything is free now. now. And this sort of continues as the instrumentation grows more chaotic and enveloping. This makes for an awesome climactic moment and a really fitting beginning for this album. Another highlight on this thing for me is the song Death Machine. This is a punky ass track, packed with pounding drums and malfunctioning bits of guitar effects. Lyrically, this thing paints an urgent picture of an unstoppable force destroying and killing everything in its path. But metaphorically speaking, this thing is uh, basically about the grind of daily life, modern life, eating us alive. That's the death machine that we're all trapped inside of. White Ghost, by comparison, is a total 180 into serene country balladry. Fit with weepy slide guitar and a very steady brushed backbeat. Super romantic chord progression on this one. Uh, seems to be about a longing for a past love of some kind. At least that's what I kind of get from it, broadly speaking. It's gorgeous and offers a nice juxtaposition to uh, a lot of the other very sardonic and bitter rages all over this thing. Baby Panda is a pretty seething critique about the way that we're treating the planet. A critique towards the powers that be that are um, fucking the ground and the sun, <laughs> which is just great imagery uh, to describe what uh, is going on, uh, what, what, th th these actions. It's a total doomsday anthem packed with very sprightly vocal harmonies and another driving instrumental, as opposed to contrast the bleak lyricism all over this thing. Ugh. Candles of Love is a very pretty piece of piano pop. The super sentimental chord progression and tune at the core of this one makes it a particularly memorable one for me. Schadenfreude, uh, which vocalist Sean Bonnet describes as the beautiful American emotion, is a super cynical cut that sort of paints our lyrical protagonist here as either ironically or not longing for the feeling of vindication at other people's pain. Essentially, schadenfreude. Loving the really tight performance on this one. Nimble bass line, super restless leads. Really nice momentum here. I Wanna Be Your Dog 2 is a simple little love song that paints our protagonist as wanting to essentially merge uh, with this person's everyday life. Wanting to be a pebble stuck inside your shoe, wanting to live inside your laundry. It's a wholesome sentiment. The instrumentation is super lush and dynamic. I'll give this one a thumbs up. Thumbs up song. Good one. Good song. Song. Fuck you for being so good. <laughs> All of My Woods is probably my least favorite track. Mostly because of its relatively uneventful instrumental progression. It gets stuck in this sort of stasis and before it can really go anywhere, it just kind of gets cut short. I don't have a problem with its low-key nature, but there are other low-key tracks here that bring so much more to the table. So much more! In the Valley is a quaint but very poetic final moment for the album. The descriptive dystopian verses and solemn instrumental backdrop here make it quite a gut punch, especially with lyrics like, in the valley of the valley of the land of no wind, 
There's a skull-covered truck where adults play pretend. I taped over the beginning, but you won't miss the end. In the valley of the valley of the land of no wind. Essentially, this is the very grim reality that the track Disposable Everything, from earlier in the record, uh, was hinting towards. It's a great full stop and bow, little bow on top, of this very quality submission to the AJJ uh, Discog. There were a handful of tracks that I thought were either a miss structurally, uh, lacked direction, or were just too brief to really write home about them. I'm thinking of a song like Dissonance. While sure this thing is peppy and has all the bones of an enjoyable song, it's a little bit too basic for my liking and it kind of ends before it really begins. A thought of you loses all momentum with this really off-kilter, incessant refrain just being repeated ad nauseum until the song ends. I hate rock and roll again is like a minute long. It's basically an interlude. Yeah, it's rowdy, but again, it's it's just kind of a head scratcher in the track list. But overall though, this thing's good. This thing's good. I haven't really been at this level of quality for a while. This thing is good. This is like one of their best since Knife Man. This thing is super consistent, solid, uh, really effective in the way that it's written and performed. I lack the more personal angle on a lot of these tracks. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah, those are my thoughts on this album. Uh, this thing is definitely going to be a favorite throughout the year, I think. Personally, I'm going to give this thing uh, an 8.5 out of 10. We did it, everyone! We did it! We got to the end of the review! And what did you think? Did you like it? Tell me why. If you're a fan of a lot of modern folk punk, I'm specifically thinking of like um, the Front Bottoms earlier stuff or even a band like um, McCafferty, then you will probably enjoy a fair bit of what this thing has to offer. And, and really what most of AJJ has to offer. I really do think they are one of the better bands in this style of music. Whatever you do, do not call this thing emo. I will slap you. Oh, pins and noodles are good! Every time, every time. It's because I'm sitting down and my legs are crossed, have been crossed for the last 12 and a half minutes. Uh, like and subscribe and comment and do all that other good stuff. Stuff that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. And it should make you feel warm and fuzzy too because you're doing a good thing. You're contributing to, 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 to this, to what's happening here. I'm done. I'm done here. It's a good album. It's a great album. Loved it. Loved it! No more FBI jokes. We're just going to leave it there. Have a good sleep. Enjoy uh, your dinner tonight, breakfast or lunch, whatever, just have a good one. Bye!